International Journal of Health Policy and Management. Quality and speed are our culture and the keys to our success. Welcome to the audio summary section of the International Journal of Health Policy and Management. Okay, so we're talking today about single interventions versus, versus multifaceted interventions and is there a simple answer to this complex question? I suppose you have to begin really thinking about um, how people imagine knowledge translation to take place and certainly from my experience uh, most people still think of knowledge translation as being about roadmaps or pipelines or gaps are things that you have to push or pull or shove. And actually, that's not where we started, Jill. Uh, we started in the mid-1990s uh, working on the Paris Framework, which is, stands for Promoting Action on Research Implementation in Health Services. And we actually started there saying, you know what, it isn't as straightforward or as simple as a roadmap. It's actually a multi-dimensional issue. It's three-dimensional. It's about evidence. It's about context. It's about facilitation. Yeah, and we we really developed Paris because we were working in the field. We were trying to implement clinical guidelines into practice, and our experience was far from rational or straightforward. And so we developed the framework in a way that it would recognise the complexity involved in thinking about what you were trying to implement, the evidence, where you were trying to implement it, what the context was like, and how you were going to go about implementation. And, and within that, we used facilitation as a process and facilitators as the agents of change to actually address implementation. So using that whole idea of facilitation to tailor make the intervention, to deal with complexity and to fit into the local context in which we were working. And, and thinking about um, this field generally, what we've seen is that other researchers, researchers outside of healthcare, have, have really recognised that there isn't a one size fits all approach to, to translation or implementation. And we've talked in the paper around the work of, of a researcher called Paul Carlyle, who studied the movement of knowledge in the field of product development. And he helpfully identifies that there are different types of boundaries that you come across. Some because the individuals involved don't have a shared language, some because they don't have a shared interpretation or a shared meaning but other much more complex boundaries where knowledge is at stake because of politics, culture, different views, different opinions. And Carlyle suggests that depending on how simple or complex the barrier boundary is, you need different strategies. For a simple boundary, it may be a single intervention that is about knowledge transfer. For a more complicated boundary though, you need to think about translation or transformational strategies and they become increasingly more complex and more sophisticated as the, as the issues that you have to deal with become more complex. So in a sense uh, from the systematic review process we've probably got the answer that we would have expected which is uh, that following the simple rules of systematic reviews um, the answer is that uh, the researchers couldn't find a difference between a simple intervention and a complex intervention. So we probably would say that um, that may be a reflection more of the particular methodology that was used and particular mental models that are still uh, pretty much alive and well and kicking across the knowledge translation uh, discourse. Uh, for us, for Jill and I, and for colleagues that use the Paris framework and are committed to really using agents of change, 
then we would have to answer the question that yes, sometimes simple interventions work, and yes, sometimes complex interventions work, but the real trick is making sure that you've got your trained facilitator actually understanding which one to, in, to introduce into which context, at which time, for which purpose.